Hello, this is Amy from iTrade Ames. Today I'm going to answer a very important question, which is what are levels to the left? And please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time there's a new video. Okay, so the question is what are levels to the left? But before that, if you're new to the channel, my name is Amy. I trade the DAX 30 on the five minute and the one minute chart at the London Open and at the US Open which is 2.30 p.m. UK or 9.30 New York time I trade the US 30. Most of the time I would stick to DAX 30 but US 30 sometimes moves better than that. Both of the London Open and the New York Open are slightly different but we apply similar kind of method. You're probably aware that most recently we launched a new strategy which we call the Lobot strategy. Lobot stands for London Open Breakout Trade. Now, it started as this initial single trade that we used to take, but as we started trading it and kept trading it, we found new methods. We applied the hunt strategy to it, and now we have come up with a new set of rules, which we call the hunt 2.0. So it's the pullback method, but it has slightly, uh, it's slightly different than the original hunt method. So if you don't know, we have the core strategy that we call the setup one, and after that, we discovered the seed method. Based on the seed method, the hunt strategy was developed. So when you are at the stage three or the level three of the AIMS training process, you actually trade the hunt strategy. The hunt strategy has four entry methods. One of it is setup one, and a variation of that is setup two. And then you have the hunt seed, the hunt cherry, and then you have the apple setup. So what I'm going to discuss today is based on, it would apply to all the strategies, but particularly to day trading. So if you're day trading the DAX 30, or if you're day trading any stock or any index, or even Forex pairs, the levels to the left is a very important um, aspect that you need to learn. So a couple of uh, questions were asked. One was in the trading chat room, Doug asked and a few other people, what are levels to the left? So people are getting confused about it a little bit. And then Dave asked a very good question in the forum. So if you don't know, we have um, this whole AIMS thing started as the AIMS forum. So we have a community forum where people keep their journals and members discuss things. And um, they share their trades in their journals and ask questions. We try to answer them. So I'm going to go to Dave's journal now and I'm going to look at his questions. So now let's go to Dave's question. So I've logged into the Ames, uh, Ames forum. This is the Ames forum. I'm going to go through that uh, question that Dave asked, which is here. Uh, and it's a very interesting question. Uh, you mentioned often about trading outside the range, uh, looking to the left, uh, making FO, which is the Frankfurt Open, and LO, which is the London Open. So uh, just before I finish that, London Open is the eight o'clock open of the uh, London Stock Exchange, but the Frankfurt opens an hour before. But even even though Frankfurt opens an hour before, uh, DAX is by the way uh, on the Zetra X E T R A um, exchange in Germany. This one hour between Frankfurt Open and London Open is considered the pre-market. So the real open is actually London Open at eight o'clock. So uh, marking FO and LO, which means um, whatever price uh, is at that first moment, the open of the first candle of the Frankfurt Open and the London Open is a particular price level which really acts as a support and resistance levels. So I talk about marking FO and LO and only trading when price is moving and away from these notable levels, yes? So the question is, what do you define as outside the range? This is a very good question. So is it avoiding the most uh, recent of congestion? Uh, look left, have some clear air, be outside the box with respect to the current wave? Or do you consider any entry within the range of the day to be inside the range? So entries are only above daily highs or below daily lows. So that's a very good question. We're going to look into that. Uh, using yesterday's chart, for example, the LO rise is clearly outside FO's range and into clear air. 
So I'm going to uh, go into my charts and we're going to look at this first and then we will uh, address the whole question as a whole. This is a very important question because if you understand this, what are levels to the left, your success rate will go to 70, 75%. And I will explain why this is happening. So, um, so we're using yesterday example, which is the 8th of October. Uh, then price goes sideways and that's easy to avoid and obvious. But the following drop goes back inside the FO range, even though it looks to be clearly trending within those levels. Would you be passing on this price action because of its positive relative to the Frankfurt Open by this criteria, it by this criteria, it made for a very sideways day yesterday that didn't see clear air again until late in New York session when it moved to 13100 above previous daily highs. Or CM1 clearly moving outside box and away from the boxes immediately left and away from recent sleeping gator range and let chaos and the energy of LO decide. A very good question deserves a detailed answer. To start with, what are levels to the left? They are obviously support and resistance levels to the left. But at a here at Ames, we use support and resistance slightly differently. We give more importance to the box highs and lows. A box high or low is a fractal high and a fractal low, which is based on five candles. Right. So there are two types of these support and resistance levels that are useful to uh, day trading in the indices. Um, number one would be your intraday support and resistor levels. So uh, what, 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 what does that mean? We are going to go into that a little bit. Number two would be swing support and resistor levels. So if you look at these two things, it will clarify what are the type of levels that you should be looking at. So for um, the, the first question then will be what are the intraday support resistance levels that I need to be looking at and which ones then are the support and resistance levels for swings, the swing support and resistance levels. So now let's discuss the two types of the support and resistance levels. Number one, intraday support and resistance levels. Okay, so number one, we want the London and Frankfurt open price to serve as intraday support and resistance levels, which Dave mentioned. We need to draw a line at the London and Frankfurt open and New York equities open. It's a price horizontal line uh, that should run for the day only. Right, so on this chart you see uh, I'm using AIMS the seed indicator. You can use that or you can use the AIMS sessions. Uh, so the AIMS, this, um, the seed indicator also has uh, this, even the fruit indicator has this option of drawing the line. So over here you can see draw open line from which candle, which is the 10 candle, which would be London open. So that's the London open. Um, at the London open, you obviously know at the first very moment, where is the price? So when the London open today, for example, right? What you have here is the London open, but this level is not going to be useful to you unless price, you know, a, a little bit later, which you can see here. But before that, Frankfurt Open has happened. So Frankfurt Open started here. Let's put a vertical line here. And I'll put a vertical line at here as well. Now, what you see is a box now. So this is the price range of the Frankfurt. So I will call this the pre-market range. This is my most important levels to the left. Now, I have these levels to the left as well. But there's, I'm not going to give them so much importance as much as I would give them to the session high and low. Now, at the London Open, when you see that this pre-market session is just 28 points, this itself is an information, which means that the pre-market is very slow. So when the market opens uh, at London Open, if it is going to be a very highly volatile period, then this first two candles are clearly going to go and smash through these levels. Because if it's just 28 candles, DAX can actually do 15 to 20 points in one M1 candle and it would break it. So then you want to see what does that first candle do? And over here, what we have seen, it went up, hit those levels and came down. So that's my first point of attack. So let me now put horizontal levels and I'm going to mark them now. It's not that I'm going to do it every day. It's just doing it for this video. So this would be my 
pre-market high and there will be another level I will put here so this could be my pre-market low or I can call it the Frankfurt session first hour high and low then what is the second thing that I need to look at so the second thing we need to look at is the overnight range so what is the overnight range the overnight range is anything between the midnight or the Tokyo open which would be around here one o'clock that price all the way to Frankfurt open so as you can see there is a pattern emerging I can then have a line here and let's for this uh, for the purpose of uh, this um, lesson I'm going to call it overnight high change the color to let's say dark orange and because it was up to here I will call this the overnight <laughs> overnight low right so that's my high this is my low and you would see that a pattern is beginning to emerge now so at the London Open, I've actually assessed what happened overnight. I've also assessed what happened pre-market, which gives me the um, idea of you know what could happen. Now, this is what I would call the the two type of levels that I would look at at the London Open. These are the intraday levels. Now, there, what are the, uh, there's a third type of intraday level. That happens after the London Open. So as you can see, this is not a very trending day, and it's uh, two and a half hours into uh, London Open. Now we have other levels established. You can see this is the high of this session. So far, I'm going to call this. Let me actually name this as well. London session high. This is so far the high of the London session. Likewise, this is so far the low of the London session. London session low. Right, so right now, now I'm not, repeat, um, let me repeat that. I'm not going to put these lines every day and mark them with, with this, but we can create an indicator for it. Uh, I was actually going through a document to say, um, to explain to whoever is going to be the coder of this indicator what I want from it. So this video could actually serve for that as well. But I've got this um, document created for it. And so these are the two things for the intraday levels. So, so far right now, what you see is that I have the Frankfurt session high and low. I have the overnight session high and low. And I have the intraday high and lows. So if I go to the M1 chart, we can see that within the M1, we have these levels that we can look at. So now, suppose I'm trading around here. Not only do I have intraday levels the on the M1 swing highs and lows to contain all of this, but at the same time, price is actually above this level. This is the low of the session, and now it's within this range. So I can easily conclude that the market is not really highly volatile and it is in a range even though it's going down on the m5 chart you can see it's trending down but every candle is kind of alternated alternating between red and green red and green and if you if you look closely every candle has these wicks on both the sides this is a, a really prime indication of uh, a range bound confused market where your candles will have red, green, red, green, and they will have wicks. Now, if I compare this to a market where price was moving clearly, which is not happening these days, uh, but if you look at this one, this is uh, out of hours, um, happened on the 5th of October. If you look at it, you have steep price action going up, green candle, green candle, followed by a red candle, which has a wick underneath it. So it became uh, a, a bullish candle. And then you have a green candle, small wicks, small wicks, and then you have this, and it keeps going up in consecutive green candle. That's your trend. When your market is going like this on the M5, on the M1, 
every time between these two candles, there will be a nice pullback setup. Right. So that's two things. What's the third thing? The third thing is the swing highs and lows. For that, you can use the hourly chart. And you don't need to look back too far back because we're only dealing with this tiny range of that hour. So if I were to look at that, the only thing that I need to look at is what is the high of the yesterday's session, the entire 24 hour session, which would include the London session, the New York session and the overnight, right? Where was the price at the lowest point? And if the price is, let's say price is all the way there, right? 212 point away from this point, it's not important for me to mark this level. But what is important to me is to just see what is the swing high. So I already know that the swing high for this one is here. This is yesterday's high. I can mark that. And then around here, I can call this the yesterday's low or I can call this yesterday's low. But because it's far away from me, it's not of much importance to me right now. What is more important to me are a few of those levels where a high of a candle would turn into a low. So I don't see anything significant in this. But if I was trading this on this day, the 7th of October, then this level became important to me. Not only this level, also this level, because it becomes a zone. As you can see, that price not only created a high here on the 6th of October, but during later on when the price came back to that level, it dropped. So that means it's a strong level and it might be still at play. There was a level from the 23rd of September that I marked this one here. Let me change the size of it, the style of it. This level played its part quite a few times in the days to come. And I filtered trades and targeted this level quite a few times during these days. As you can see, after this very strong day, the market has been up and down and up and down and going like this. So that's all there is to it. These levels are not that important. What are important are the three intraday levels. But let me just go back to the so let's enlarge this chart for a moment. He's taken a very good trade uh, based at the London Open. So this initial spike that happened at the London and came down. Uh, if somebody traded it here, they will be taken out. And I remember Jasmine made a call where she was like, I'm long, I'm out BE because she got in here and she got out quickly. Whereas just like Dave, I also traded it here. And I... Um, this is what we call the micro pullback using the uh, the 12 second chart uh, but even on this it was a pullback I took this trade myself it was exactly like this and the example that is put here is perfect this is exactly the example of nothing to the left so this is the, a very good example of nothing to the left at the London Open because what do you see on the M1 chart at least um, to clarify this point number one nothing to the left means that when you're trading the pullbacks, right, you want the only thing that needs to be to the left, that can be to the left, is the current price high of the last two to three candles. So this is your only something to the left when you're making this entry here. If this pullback was here, like this one, then you have a lot of stuff to the left. Now, entries can be taken based on that, but you'll have to account for other things which is a topic for another video. Things like PC and stuff like that. So now we have another example here when price has now come back to the range, which is the previous range here. And he's taken a trade and this is normal. This is not a bad entry, uh, but the probability of the entry is lower because now you have price that went up then went sideways like so. Let's use some drawing. So as you can see, price went up but there was no follow through, came down. Now, even up to here, I'm still thinking, okay, it might bounce off this level, which it did here, but that was too late, why? Because once it came here and started going up, it created a box high. Price went down and now it has to go up and this will be your levels to the left, but this is the recent high, right? And you want to consider that, you want to see what price does around that. So it went up and what did it do? It bounced off it. 
once it bounced off it, it came down. Now I'm not interested in these pullbacks. This is actually a sideways market. Tries it again, doesn't break, comes down, breaks the range low here, right? And then it pulls back towards the green line. Now on its own from this observation of the price that it created a sideways market and then it pulled back, it is a pretty good pullback setup. And as you can see, this is a PC pattern. So you could take a trade here based on the PC, but the low bot method that we apply, we don't want to take a trade if it the previous swing, which is this box low, is not the lowest low. So if, if this failed, then I'm not going to touch any of the price until this box low is broken. So I would have taken a trade here unless there was a, a, a pin bar, a PC candle, a cherry candle here with a tail sticking out here. Then I would say, okay, this is A, B, and C. I can go in here, but that's a slightly different concept. So that's that. So from that point of view, you don't want to take trades within markets like these. And if you do take them, you have to scalp them between these levels. So if you were to take a trade here and your target would be here because of this uh, range low, then that would make sense. But you have to take responsibility for that and say, if something goes wrong, you know that you're trading a range bound market. And the question is, why is a market range bound? That means that the index uh, the the 30 stocks for this particular index are not simultaneously moving in a similar direction. It's not one of those very strong days or very or uh, or very weak days for that day. It's it's a day where some stocks are going up and some are, some are going down. And sometimes the balance is so um, it's there, there's such an equilibrium that either nothing is moving or if it's moving there are wild swings because some of the heavy trading of for the big stocks that contribute to that index are going really up and some are going really down and it really makes that index become, uh, you know, spiky. So let's go back to the questions. So right at this moment when we were trading, what were my levels to the left? Now that we know that I have marked my Frankfurt open session, I have marked my uh, pre-market highs and lows, that would give me an indication of what am I supposed to do, right? So if I zoom zoom out a bit or if I go to the M5 chart, we can see now that uh, even though I marked the overnight high up there, this is where the common sense bit comes. When the market was coming up, I had these swing highs of the session high, uh, of the pre-market or, or the overnight session to contend to. What did price do? Price came here, touched these levels, and what was it? It was 13100. So it's like a BRN level. The big round number effect is there as well because that's where it kind of got stuck. So if you look at this level, the swing low here and the swing high here, this was relevant as well. And now I'm going to go into rectangles. So what I do is that I would mark my pre-market highs and lows, the overnight highs and lows, and yesterday's significant levels from the swing. It would be the high of the day, or if there's a consecutive, like a, a very significant move, um, let's say we, we can see it on the five minute chart. Yesterday was also kind of very sideways market. So these levels here, these levels here are important to me. So price comes down during overnight at the London Open at the London Open went up hit those levels came down created this inside candle this trade was available if somebody wanted to take it but your Frankfurt uh, Open was there so it would create a bit of a confusion in your head you probably uh, down trade it and that would be a good idea. Or sometimes you'd think, okay, I'm, I'm going to take one trade, which is the low bot method, because London Open can bring volatility. So if it was a highly volatile day and probably and the market was not going to look back, then this would be a good entry for me. So you could have taken that. 
or if you applied the rule of respecting these levels, which is the Frankfurt open session high and the Frankfurt open level, they were both to together here. As you can see, prices come up. Let's zoom in, come to it, and then it pulled back. It pulled back, and guess where it's bounced against? The overnight low. Can you see this? Let's go back to the overnight lows where I marked it from. So as you can see, the overnight lows were just before the Frankfurt Open over here. And if you had marked them already, and then you saw the London Open, and you saw that price is actually hitting the Frankfurt Open and the, uh, the Frankfurt Session highs, they're the same level. You want to see this interaction of the price. It broke it, came back to it, retested the 10 EMA, and bounced against the, the lows, which is this level, and then it created a bullish candle. That's it. I was long here, took the long, stop loss was here, and it went 20 up. I'm going to show you the picture. So in this picture you see, I shared this picture with Sam only. I have marked, just for the sake of it, uh, this the open level, and this is the London open and the box indicates the session uh, range, right? So like you see, you see the price over here did not actually go up uh, in style. It bounced against those levels. And this is what I call levels to the left. When I am considering an entry on the M1, I have those predefined levels, the session highs and session lows, the swing highs and swing lows, intraday swing highs and lows, the overall swing, which can be seen on the uh, on the hourly chart, or the intraday swing highs and lows, which is this, these levels over here, uh, and then the predefined one, which is the, uh, the session highs and lows. And because I had the pre-market session high and low marked, I saw this happening, the bounce against the 10 EMA, and then the bullish candle, and then it became, so this becomes a, a one candle pullback, a waltz pattern with a confirmation candle. I went long here, market order, had a 20 stop loss, and it went, uh, target point, sorry, with a 10 stop loss, 20 target point, that's it. And once that was done, that means I was 2% up, that's it. I did not even look at it. Uh, I casually, because people were talking in the chat room, helping out each other, asking questions, My questions were asked, good questions were asked. Good replies were given i was just sitting in the background enjoying the process so hopefully this answers um, the most critical questions what is levels to the left to conclude to wrap it up most importantly are the most important levels at the london open at the session are the immediate levels to the left and you want to see how the market reacts to it at the same time, you also want to see what is this first candle doing? Is it a very strong price action, you know, which moves? So as we know that the range of the Frankfurt, uh, the pre-market was only 28. So that means if the market was to start with, a, uh, if it is going to be a, a highly volatile day, then this first candle should clear this range or this range or the first few candles. So what it did is it, that it did it in one, two, three, four, five candles. In five candles, it cleared the range and then it pulled back. I went high, uh, I went long. So that's what it is. After that, you can use those uh, pre-market or the overnight or yesterday's highs and lows or the swing highs and lows for your target. So if you're taking a 10 point risk and your target is also 10 point, then that's kind of like an okay entry. But if you're making an entry and there's a support and resistance levels about 20 points away from you and your stop loss is 10, then that's a very good entry because there's a higher chance that price might turn around to that level so you can take your profits there. Now, what are the best days to trade? I've randomly selected this day to use an example of a day where there was nothing to the left. So if you look at this example, uh, this is our uh, pre-market high and low. So that's our pre-market session highs and lows. We have it clarified. Uh, let's go to the M5 chart. This would be our range for 
the overnight highs and lows, right? It's this range. So that's overnight. So what's important here, what you would see is that by the end of the Frankfurt pre-market, the first hour, price is opening right below the overnight lows. Trend is down. Frankfurt open is above the London open, another indication of a downtrend. Now that means that if price was to break below this level, we would be in a confirmed downtrend. And then after that, if it goes and then comes back and retest that level, there's a higher chance of price going down further. So if you look at this, my first entry on this was below this level. I was wary of this level, but I knew that if the ball was to drop, it will be a steel ball. It's going to break through this, this glass level. And it did. In between these two candles, is a micro pullback. The 12 second chart created a nice pullback. This was my another entry on this. It went down further. For the low bot method, this is all I'm interested in. Within this, I have two to three trades, three, four, five percent, you're done. That's it. But later on, when price went back, as you can see, it wasn't that clean, but it came back to this level and went down further. Pulls back, what does it do? comes to this level, goes down. Around here, let's suppose if I'm trading this, this level short, if I'm trading this, if this is the box, what is my levels to the left? Now I don't have the Frankfurt open, I don't have the London open. There is no level to the left, right? I don't want the levels. If the levels are there, okay, they give me information. But if they are left behind, like in this case, my pre-market levels are left, they're gone, they've been cleared. My overnight levels, they are gone. They have been cleared, right? Here, here. And then the range has already been retested as well. I have nothing to worry about from the intraday perspective. Then what do I have? I have this level to contend. Right? Probably this level. This is from yesterday. This is a low, right? So when the market was here, I probably this level. So let's go into it a bit further. So most importantly, if I was trading this level, If I was going to go short here, my ideal level is this and this. And it happens to be also the level to the left from yesterday. So there you go. Price reacts to it. It goes up, reacts to this again, comes down. Now, I'm, now I want price to actually clear these levels because these are my levels to the left now. So I'm not trading it unless it clears it. It clears it here. As soon as it clears it here, you, have, you see this wick? A micro pullback on the 12 second chart. I would have an entry here. If not, I will take the low of this box and scalp it. Even this would be good. I would take this because I have nothing to the left, only the lowest low. So that's the conclusion. When you want to take a trade, you can take trades inside those levels, but you have to be clever uh, to either use them as a target point or to create enough space between them. And when everything is clear, and there's nothing to the left, then you only take pullback methods when that low, let's suppose over here, is the lowest low of that period. So over here, this wasn't the lowest low because this was the lowest low, but it was a swing low. You could take a breakout trade around here, but I would take it below this. And then stop loss would be somewhere there or 10 points. Then it comes here, goes up. This tries to break this low, but fails. So I'm not going to take this low because now I want price to go below this. And that's what it is. I hope it clears, uh, clarifies these questions. I love these questions. If you have questions like this, please do ask them in your journal and I will try to answer them correctly. So these are the three important things that I look at and these are the intraday levels. And I hope if you apply these to your trading, they're gonna take your win rate above 70%.
And if you found value in this video, please do hit the like button. And if you have any other questions, ask them in the comment section. And I would not only answer them, if they are very interesting, I probably will make a video about it. So thank you, Dave and Doc, for asking these questions. The next video is hopefully going to be um, another member's question. She asked a very good question, and I promise that I will answer uh, to, I will reply to her question in a video. But Dave's question was even more interesting, so I made this one first. So, um, Emma, you're next. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video, and if yes, please hit the like button. Do you have any questions or ideas for upcoming videos? Then leave a comment. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any future videos. See you next time.